there's an absolute nightmare that people starting in business or even having been in business for several years face. And that is the cease and desist letter that says you need to stop using the branding you're developing. The cease and desist letter comes from people who already own that brand and they have somehow become familiar with your use of their brand. To respond to this cease and desist letter, you have to do one of a, one of a couple of things. The first thing is to comply with the cease and desist letter and stop using the branding. Abandon your website uh, URL, abandon your email URL, abandon your, your uh, logo, abandon your tagline, abandon your brand and start over. That's expensive, it's long, it's horrible. Another thing you can do is to respond to the cease and desist letter with, excuse me, but this is not confusingly similar. That is longer and more horrible because that sets you up for litigation. Uh, and trademark litigation is by definition long, horrible, angst producing, and just not someplace you really wanna go. Because if you're the junior user, you're, you've got one and a half strikes against you going in. The third thing you can do is to contact the uh, brand owner and say, okay, can we work together and agree to co-own the brand and I will pay you a licensing fee or I will, you know, I, I will make it worth your while somehow. Not all of these things work all the time. Usually the thing that you end up doing is abandoning your brand. So how do you fix this? Well, the best way to fix it is to not encounter it. So how do you not encounter it? You have the trademark search done. Yeah, a trademark search is a chunk of change and it feels like it's very expensive up front, but it saves you this horrible experience down the road.